what is up space noids earth noids and everything in between i am just a simple new type and we're back to talk about universal century i know i've been spending some time on alternative universe timelines so it is time to pivot back to the main gundam timeline in our last uc video we discussed the battle of loom and skipped over operation british so we are going back in time a little bit to discuss the most devastating event in the UC timeline that left a lasting impression post one year war. It also set a precedent for battle. Once the colony is out of the box, there is no amount of space noids that you can stuff back into that box. This is now a tactic that can and will be used again in space battles. So let's dive into Operation British the colony drop that occurred using Side 2, and the devastation of Australia. January 3rd, UC0079. On January 3rd of the year UC0079, the Principality of Xeon declares war on the Earth Federation. During this time, they launch an attack on Sides 1, 2, and 3. Xeon wanted to ensure their victory early on in the war, so in order to do this, they planned on taking a colony from side 2 and dropping it on Jaburo. Jaburo is a military fortress and headquarters for the Earth Federation forces. It is a subterranean base that is somewhere in the heart of the Amazon in South America. The exact location of the base is unknown to Xeon forces, but if using a colony, something more devastating than nuclear weapons, this wasn't a problem for Xeon. Their plan seemed to be hit everything and hope for the best. January 4th, UC0079. Late at night the next day, the operation began. It should be noted that the events of Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin are slightly different and have this event starting on January 10th and ending on January 16th. Island Ifish is the choice for Xeon's attack. Island Ifish is the capital of Side 2. Xeon attaches nuclear pulse engines onto the colony. In The Origin, we see the inhabitants flee to an evacuation point, while others, including this sad fuck, stay behind to stand guard. It unfortunately doesn't matter for the 20 billion inhabitants of the colony, as this doesn't end well for them. Also in origin, Xeon sends nerve gas throughout the colony, killing this sad Mada, Mada. process. Stop making me feel for one individual in this instance, Sunrise. There are billions here who are about to die. Spoiler. During this first week of battle, either side wasn't afraid of using toxic nerve gas or nuclear weapons during the war, and this operation is clearly no different. Using the nuclear pulse engines to send the colony towards Earth and Jaburo, the Earth Federation picked up on the fact that Xeon's target was Earth Federation's headquarters. Luna 2, the asteroid base located at the L3 point, sent out forces to intercept. The fleet that goes to intercept is none other than Vice Admiral Tiamat and his fleet. The Tiamat fleet We'll go from this battle straight into the Battle of Loon. Check out that video if you want to see a breakdown on that battle. January 6th through 8th, UC0079. The Tiamin fleet intercepts the rogue colony and the Xeon forces. But Xeon's mobile suits defends the fallen colony. The Earth forces launched several nukes at the colony, but it was useless. The colonies are reinforced to withstand nuclear blasts. This is exactly why a colony was used by Xeon against Jaburo instead of nuclear weapons. The impact force of the colony is 3 million times that of Hiroshima. Think about that for a second. On the 8th, the Earth forces decided to change up their strategy by focusing their attention on the Xeon forces instead of the fallen colony. However, this was also fruitless because of Xeon's mobile suit superiority. This was before the Earth Federation will have their own mobile suits to combat the mass-produced Xeon Zaku. Salamis-class ships, now more powerful, 
just simply didn't have the maneuverability of a mobile suit. We will see this similar conflict play out during the Battle of Loom. The Earth forces simply couldn't do anything to stop the colony or the Xeon forces. At this point, Operation British seemed inevitable. January 9th, UC0079. The Earth forces couldn't do anything to prevent island ifish from entering Earth's atmosphere. They ceased fire as they believed any more damage to the colony could break it apart during entry into the atmosphere and cause even greater damage to Earth. Even ground forces ceased ground-to-air nuclear assaults. January 10th, UC0079. Jaburo began their evacuation as there was nothing they could do. Earth Federation's heart of operation was about to be stabbed with a knife. However, the unexpected happened. The space colony suddenly broke apart over the Arabian Peninsula. The front end of the colony set its course on Sydney, Australia. The inevitable took its course. The colony drop on Australia caused devastating events on Earth and continues to do so in the UC timeline. This event flooded 16% of Australia and tsunamis and tidal waves and storms caused a drastic variation to the atmosphere and weather on Earth. According to Mobile Suit Gundam, the big book of tactics, the attack also caused the Earth's rotation to accelerate slightly. So uh, yeah, there's a little fun fact for you. Also in Gundam The Origin, it is noted that after all the weather disasters and famine that occurred during Operation British, half of the world's population was killed. Xeon forces also took a heavy loss to their Chevet and Musai class ships, along with around 140 mobile suits were destroyed. Sydney now has a giant crater that can be seen from space. Although the damage was beyond belief, it was still considered a failure for Xeon as Jaburo is still in operation. Following the assault, Xeon's fleet regrouped. What was their plan after attempting to drop a colony on Earth? Their solution, of course, was to try it again. This time, Xeon had their sights on Side 5, a second Operation British was on its way. Besides all of the colony drop memes, what makes this event in Gundam history so pivotal is its scale. 20 billion people died on Island Ivish, and according to Origin, although it is a different timeline, half of Earth's population perishes, which is most definitely a smaller number than that of the colony. It also sets a precedent for space battle. No colony is safe in the UC universe after this event and we see this play out again and again. As this has the impact force greater than that of a nuclear weapon, a new weapon of mass destruction is now introduced into the Universal Century forces. Fun times. Even though this is the first major battle in the One Year War, I refer to the Battle of Loom as the first real battle of the war. Check out our video to learn more about why. But spoiler alert, it has to do with the Minovsky Particle's ability to disrupt modern radar technologies along with the advancement of Xeon's mobile suit technologies. However, the devastation of this event will ring throughout the UC timeline. January 31st, UC0079 After Operation British and the Battle of Loom, the Principality of Xeon and the Earth Federation meet in Antarctica to negotiate a peace treaty. In origin, General Revel takes to the airwaves to give a riveting speech about how the treaty will lead to suppression of the Earth Federation and urges not to sign the peace treaty. The end of the war did not happen in Antarctica, but one good thing to come out of it was the signing of the Antarctic Treaty. This treaty banned the use of nuclear weapons, colony drops, and other weapons of mass destruction. The treaty also guaranteed the neutrality of Side 6 and the Lunar Cities. And that will do it for this video. I hope you learned a little something about the most devastating event 
in the UC timeline. Although we see colony drops post one year war, the signing of the Antarctic Treaty led to a greater demand for mobile suit technology. In the next video, we will dive into the beginning of mobile suit Gundam. We will talk about Project V, the creation of the Gundam, as well as the commission of the Pegasus class ship, White Base. Until then, don't go dropping any colonies. Catch you later, new types.